God is using little things to tell us what he wants us to do. I think our story goes back to the mid 60s when my husband got up from bed one night and he said, I had a dream. I was in the Alexandria. We have a beautiful beach close to our house. And as I was standing there, I saw uh, some fishermen coming and they asked me to come and draw the uh, net with them. And I just went to the boat and drew the nets and there was a lot of fish there. I didn't know anything about that, except it's a dream. A few minutes later, he said, I don't think it was a dream. I think it was a vision. I said, what it's all about? He said, God told me I'll make you fishers of men. I said, both of us? He said, I think. So we kept really praying for that. We never understood quite good what, what it meant. Follow me. What, Lord, follow you? What are you going to do with a banker or a teacher? Are you going to make them evangelists? I have a brother who is fond of sharing his faith with everybody, my youngest brother. When I was praying, I said, Lord, you are asking me, why don't you ask Joseph? He is, he will suit you more. He's better than I. We didn't listen and we delayed it. And we were not obedient for some time. As a banker, everything was planned. Everything was designed. I, my life used to be as a, a train going on rails forward, on and on and on. No turn right, no turn left. Well, time passed by until we happened to receive a phone call. The phone rings. Who is calling us so late? This is not scheduled. He was a pastor of a big church in Cairo. Telling us that we need to go to Lebanon by route. To a conference center. And there, there were a group of people from Campus Crusade who were training us what we learned later to be the four special laws. Read it to the people and you'll help them to pray to receive Christ. They taught us how to use it, but we didn't understand how it works. Until we were asked to go apply what we learned in class down in, in, the, in the market and me and my husband, we agreed together. Uh, we're gonna meet after half an hour to go shopping. That's enough to use this booklet. They took us downtown Beirut, dropped me in the big place in the center of the city, took Violet to another place, and I found myself in front of a cafeteria I entered. So somebody sitting there by himself, approached him, carrying the booklet in my hand. I said to him, I'm from Egypt, and I have this booklet, I want to read it for you. Is it okay? I was very fast saying that. The man looked at me, he said, sure, why not? And he pushed the uh, chair and I sat in front of him. Quickly, I finished the booklet. And in a very monotonous way, I was not expecting any result. But to my astonishment, tears filled his eyes, flow on his face, and the man pray to receive Christ. I was, I didn't know what to do. It is true, this is the training we went through that we can share with people, but we were never told the reactions could be that. When I talked to several people and to my amazement, they just prayed to receive Christ. I was kind of shocked. It was above my expectations. I was thrilled. I was kind of flying in the air and I have never been exposed before to something or some way even to talk to people about God and they would accept in a Muslim country that even pastors cannot do that. They can only have their own sermons from church, from the altar, but never share with people around somewhere in the streets. It's forbidden, as a matter of fact, it's against the law. And uh, I was excited, I was trembling. The man looked at me, 
he grabbed my hand and took me out and ran to his car, put me in his car and drove to his home and called his wife, said, come honey, I have something for you. This man is from Egypt and he wants to share something with you and they shared with his wife. Just watching me and just listening to every word with great attention. And she prayed to receive Christ. What's happening? I didn't understand. They took me to a nearby house, to a couple of the neighbors. And in two hours, I read the book, this booklet three times and four people pray to receive Christ. Our life was never the same since then. And God began calling us. And I felt like, if this is true, then it could be, this is what God wants us to do. But how? In Egypt, nobody on earth encouraged us for whatever reason. Everybody kept saying, who you think yourself are, both of you? Are you going to save the world? They kept saying really discouraging and, and saying that you can't do that in a country like ours and, and you have, you're doing a lot already in church, but we felt like we need to do much more than this, but nobody has encouraged this family, not ever. Church, never before. It was kind of fight for, for a few years. And when my husband was in Saudi Arabia later, I had very deep feeling that tomorrow I'm going to submit my resignation. I was sent by my bank to work on a project between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Egypt. And I was representing Egypt. So as we were sitting around the table, a Saudi gentleman who was a member of the cabinet and a member of the royal family he lifted his hand like this and stopped me. And he said, I didn't come here to talk about these things. What do you want to talk about? He said, with great determination, I want to talk about Jesus Christ. I was shocked and afraid and my, my voice, even I lost my voice. What is he saying? When I came in this country, they took my Arabic Bible from me at the airport. No Bibles are, were allowed to enter the country. And now here is a VIP Saudi asking me to talk about Jesus Christ. And he said it again. I want to talk with somebody about Jesus Christ. Oh God, this was too much for me. I could not resist anymore. That night I couldn't sleep. In the morning, early in the morning, I telexed my resignation to my bank, you know. Here my husband calls me, guess what I did today? <laughs> I submitted my resignation. And I said, guess what? I did the same with, <laughs> with my mother superior here. I talked to her today and I told her that I have the very deep feeling that I cannot come to school tomorrow. And I'm quite sure of the call now more than ever before. We have been resisting all this call for seven years. It was exactly seven years by then. And I can't resist anymore, and I think it's time to go. I never thought that I can be, leave this rails of banking and go for evangelism. It was a long trip that took many, many years with many triumphs and many failures. But God has a plan. So I believe as long as God is using us, we are still on the race. On rails, on roads, on space, as long as he's using us. <laughs>